Trundle Jungle is starting to get picked in challenger games and is seeing a massive rise in popularity. He is a really good answer into champions such as Xin Zhao because of his 1v1 power. In the early game with press the attack especially, he is a powerhouse. He also has very good ganks versus immobile targets he can make their lives an absolute living hell. Because of his pillar, they will not be able to walk or escape or do anything in their lanes. So if you ever see bot lanes like Jinx and Lulu, Trundle is the perfect pick to absolutely make them feed and snowball the game. Trundle also has a lot of build versatility. He can go Sunderer, he can go Frostfire, he can go for damage, he can go for tank, he can go for off tank, Bruiser, he can do everything essentially. Anyway, with that said, here we can see skins from Team Vitality on the Trundle pick in 1000 LP Challenger US. And you can see here he's going for a 3 camp clear on the Trundle pick. So the objective of Trundle as a jungler is essentially to snowball your lanes, snowball the game and make it end quick. Because this champion will start to struggle against ranged targets, um, he's going to be very kiteable. But as you can see in this uh, game it wouldn't be too much of an issue because he is against a mostly melee comp. So this is an environment where Trundle would thrive. Here you can see on the bottom side of the map he has priority and his Thresh is moving already so he is looking for an invade on the Diana here. What did we say about his 1v1 power? He's very very strong early game. And versus burst champions like Diana who need a few items to really start doing some damage, Trundle can absolutely just one shot them. So just look at that damage there onto the Diana. Flashes away, Q slows, W move speed, pillar, there's just no escaping this Trundle when you're in a mobile champion. So with that kill picked up, Skeens is always going to be looking for the next move. Is there going to be a gank available anywhere? If not, he's just going to continue farming. As you can see here, he is farming. You know, looking at the map, Talon is quite far up in the lane. You might think it's a good gank. But the problem with ganking Talon as Trundle is he'll always just jump over your pillar and just jump over those walls. So here you can see he is rotating for the bot lane fight, trying to find uh, a kill if he can. But the enemy bot lane is already safe, so he will just go and return to his own jungle to continue farming. So when you're playing this trundle you've got to be looking for every single gank you can find that is high percentage chance and this is one of the reasons why skeens is pathing towards the bot side because looking at your bot lane you have quite good setup with the with the thresh aphelios can also have his root gun and then looking at the enemy bot lane they're immobile um so if trundle pillars thresh should always hit his hook and the enemy bot lane should just die so it's a prime lane to target to snowball the game but you can see no ganks available, Skeens just continues farming. And you'll notice this pattern a lot in my videos. If there is no gank available, the default is to just farm your own jungle. Ganks will always take priority, so if you see a good one while you're farming, you just have to ditch your camps and go for that gank. But otherwise, you just keep farming. Anyway, here you can see Skeens with his first recall. He does have that Sheen and Longsword, so he is going for that Sunderer build. This build has become the main build for Trundle now in the last couple of patches. It used to always be Frostfire and I personally think that Frostfire is actually still the better buy just because Trundle's clear speed is quite slow um, and if you don't snowball a game and don't get a lot of kills you can end up quite squishy with the um, with the Sunderer only having HP and also it can be very hard to deal your damage as the Trundle um, if you're playing into even just two or three ranged champions or if you're playing into a comp with a lot of CC you'll find it very hard to deal damage so you'll just get bursted down in fights and you won't be the carry that you want to be. So personally I think Frostfire is the better build for Trundle, you're not sacrificing too much damage, you're getting tankier, you're providing utility with the slow which will help you do more damage um, because you'll be able to stick onto your targets and also it'll help your teammates with, um, with fights and you can even peel for them with that slow. And again another benefit for the Frostfire build is that it is cheaper. It will allow you to get more items sooner and it will allow you to have a bit more impact, in my opinion, for the Trundle pick. Anyway, here you can see Skeens is invading Diana's top side. This is because his bot lane just got dove and we got confirmation that Diana is on the bottom side. If you take a look at the map there quickly, you can see he doesn't exactly have Pryo in his lanes, but he does have his support roaming over to help him out in case anything happens. Like here, Diana shows up, takes away the Grom. It looks like there's going to be a fight breaking out here. Talon is probably on the move from the backside. Will Trundle die here? Skeens had to flash over the wall. Yep, Talon is going to find him here. It looks like this fight is going to go poorly because Skeens did not respect priority in his lanes. So that's one thing you need to keep in mind in your games. 
if you don't have priority, you are in a very risky position and you can get screwed. So denying those camps is, was a very good idea, except for the fact that giving over those kills means that they are giving the enemy a gold lead instead of getting themselves ahead. So anyway, Skeen's response, he's back to his top side, he's gonna clear downwards. Really nice shutdown there for the set onto the Renekton. Quite surprising he actually does pick that up, despite being down so much in lane. But um, here you can see Skeen's again just clearing on the way to the bottom side, trying to find ganks on that immobile lane where they have no dashes. Here I'd be interested in seeing the state of the bottom lane, because this Raptor camp could potentially just have been skipped by Skeen's and he could have just ran straight down to the bottom lane to gank. So you can see that they're very overextended for quite a long time. And Skeens is just firing. So like this is not how you want to be playing the Trundle. In my opinion, he does not farm very quickly. Um, so like if you want that high win rate on the Trundle, you've got to be able to apply pressure to the map and get your lanes winning. Because these camps, they're only providing you 100 gold per camp on average. If you just pick up one kill, um, on the bottom lane, that's 300 gold right there from the kill. There's going to be gold from the assist as well. Then there's going to be value generated from the minions, the XP and gold that they provide. Um, so like overall, it's going to be way more worth, uh, like one good gank is going to be way more worth than just half of your jungle, uh, even potentially all of your jungle, if it, if it even ends up being in a double kill. Here you can see he's looking for a gank on the Talon. Will this one work out? Ultis, jumps over the wall, jumps over the wall again. So you can see this is exactly why you don't want to be ganking Talon as the Trundle. And Skeen's kind of messed up here. He doesn't have anything to farm except the dragon now. Um, and he could have potentially just had a kill or two on the bottom side and then just took this dragon anyway with his bot lane. So here he is clearing it out. Fight going on here. Varus about to kill his set. Pillars him away. Keep set safe. And you can see, not applying any pressure is making it quite troubling for his lane. Blitzcrank, for some reason, trying to go pick up kills as the support onto the set. Finds himself in a 1 versus 3. Now Talon coming in, trying to find the set as well. Will they be able to find him this time? Or will he just jump over 20 walls and make his escape? Looks like with the slow, they will find him. Big shutdown passed over to the Trundle there on the Skeens. So that's going to be a very, very big swing for this game. Despite being 4k gold ahead, there's 4k gold behind, sorry. Um, it looks like they might still have a good chance here if the enemy keeps taking bad fights like this. And again, here you can see the recalls, has his full Sunderer, and he's back to just full clearing on the Trundle pick when nothing is available for, it, for ganking. Enemy summons Herald mid. Takes two plates. No reason to react there for Skeens. The break will happen anyway, and if he tries to gank a Talon, well, we know what happens if he tries to do that. Fight going on here in the top lane. Skeens is actually reacting. Trying to find a kill here. He'll probably look for a dive. We know Diana's on the bottom side of the map. You can see on the map there, they're fighting on the bottom side. And here, you're gonna hold the wave just to make sure that Set's wave crashes. And then... So they can get onto the tower without tanking uh, tower shots unnecessarily. So really nice queen pick up there with the ulti. Um, and they might be able to break. They'll probably break this tower down fully. Might be another plate here. And he's just going to leave this one to the set. Okay, Talon's here. And yes, very nice. The enemy team is taking these fights. You can see this is what I was talking about with the power of the trundle. If you can fight melee targets, if you can stick to them, he is very, very strong with that PTA, press the attack room. So just from that gank alone, they secured two kills and a tower. So really nice. And this is the kind of impact you want to be seeing on Trundle in your games. So here you can see picks up the uh, the steel caps, Ninja Tabai, as uh, most of us would know it by. And this is a really solid buy because the enemy team is nearly full AD. So here you can see enemy bot lane is trying to push that top lane very far up. Uh, as a mobile champions, it's very simple for Trundle to just drop a pillar, slow someone, and just chase them down. So 
you can see that's that is the power of trundle you see an immobile champion you just make their life hell so it looks like everyone's grouping up now in the top lane gonna be a fight here Barris kind of positioned there a bit trying to escape talent with the ulti will he get away from this one on half health quite low invisible pillar there jumps over and looks like they do find that one so despite being thousands of gold ahead they find a pick on the Varus and the fight becomes quite good and in their favor. Fighting uh, with numbers. So you see W move speed and Zillion really helps with the chasing. But unfortunately the enemies were too far away there. So we will rotate up to this mid tower, secure that. They have Pyro in the mid lane while someone's clearing mid. They'll be able to easily take a 5v4 here at the dragon and burst it down before. And he even has a chance to, to try steal this. See, Diana is trying to look there. And she's trying to get one shot over the wall nearly. Fail flash there from Diana there as well. 1000 LP. It's probably not worth flashing for that dragon. She did just pass away, pass over. Um, quite a big bounty. And again, another pick happening here. With the Zillion Thresh Trundle, the, the pick potential here on this comp is huge. As a result of these picks, they're able to take this Herald without any contest from the enemy team. This will be nice to secure up so they can potentially look for an inhibitor in the mid lane. He should be taking a base soon here. Here he is. Yes, there we go. wonder what will he be buying? Talon, trying to fight the 1v1 again. Maybe he'll int. Yeah, it looks like he's not escaping this one. You can see Trundle or Q. Big damage from this champion, despite being uh, somewhat tanky as well with the Sundra. Picks up that Renekton as well, and you can see Skeen's having a very, very big lead now over to Diana. Because of that pressure that the Trundle can provide. Um, and those picks that he has been finding. So a bit of patience here in the mid lane, catching the wave, since no one's around to catch it. Waiting for the teammates to get back onto the map. Just gonna farm his Grom safely. And then I'd say they're gonna be looking for those picks again as a team. Zillion move speed. Trundle move speed. Trundle pillar. Trundle slow. Combining everything. It should be very, very easy picks. You can see here Renekton on the bomb side. On the bot lane. Trying to push up the wave. Get that pushed out. And Skeens is in position to strike onto this crocodile. Waiting for a zillion to, to get in range there to make sure that the, the, the Renekton cannot get away from the gank here. Looks like they will die here. And here you can see with the Sunderer he is doing a bit more damage but with the Frostfire he would have been able to stick onto the Renekton there um, a bit easier. Nice pick there, he's gonna drop his Herald here and look for some action in the mid lane potentially. I don't know, he's gonna look for the split push and just let everyone hold in the mid lane 4v4. Nice, his team does find Diana. His team is winning the 4v4 fight. Looks like they are starting to get the gold lead on their side. And this is gonna be largely because of Skeens on the Trundle pick, the ability to find those picks um uh 1v1s and you know just being very strong you know, overall in these fights as you can see sterax those come out kindle gem now with the with the bramble on his way towards a thorn mail and i wonder what that kindle gem will actually be here you can see everyone grouped up around for the dragon again and with the lead in gold, if they can find a pick, they'll just be able to mop up a 5v4 very easily. Set nearly out of position there. Those get lanterned out to safety. And I'd expect this to just be a clean sweep for, for Skeen's team. Blitzcrank's half health. Enemies all melee, essentially. So Ophelios just keeps a good position. And Skeens keeps pelting away with them with the pillar. And they should be able to just beat everyone up on the enemy team. So you can see Talon going in, Diana going in, all separate. Renekton now separately going in as well. They're finding it very hard to actually play these team fights. 
on the other side. Now just one good pillar to push someone out of position can make or break a team fight. Infernal souls uh, secured up there. Looks like they will be able to just ace the whole enemy team. No, no point chasing the Blitzcrank, he's already out, so they're just going to go for the Dragon here, uh, for the Baron. And looks like it'll, it'll be a very nice um, game to just easily close out. Everyone wants the base, Skeens doesn't want to yet. Pushes out the wave to get some pressure. Make the enemy show up there, provide some safety, provide some confirmation of where everyone is, until this team returns. We see patience there. No one on his team is on the map pressuring, so he's just chilling out, waiting for his laners to get back into lanes. And will probably be one more big one, one or two more team fights will do it for this game. So if they can keep playing them this while, well, should be quite a clean game. On the barn here now already. Bit of a risky position when there's a Diana who could hit a five man ulti. Here comes the dash, here comes the ulti from the Diana, four man, didn't do as much damage as you might have thought. You can see with the Trundle build, um, Sunderer, Frostfire, whatever you go, lots of damage, lots of tankiness, um, very strong champion. So they do secure the Baron, they win this team fight, runs down the Varus and looks like the game does end right there, the enemy FF right before the Varus could have died we can see the trundle pick is very strong um, if you do pick them up in solo queue just know always look for those three camp clears look for ganks your your job is to snowball the game and make the enemy feed